Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. We're doing another light review today. This is from a company called Chilled Tech. If you haven't heard of Chilled, they make some really beautiful, really high performance stuff and their Growcraft line is a perfect example of that. So ever since the Growcraft stuff came out, I've been really eager and wishing I could get my hands on one to test and I finally have. I actually just finished building and testing this unit here. This is the X3 330 watt DIY kit, which is meant for a two foot by four foot space. And I can tell you before we get going, this is one of the most beautiful, most well-designed and highest performing lights I've ever tested. In my opinion, this light is just absolutely gorgeous and you can tell that a lot of thought was put into the design of this thing. For example, each of these light bars is built on an aluminum extrusion base, which gives it a very sleek, very elegant look. And it's also incredibly sturdy. You can pick this thing up from just about anywhere, whether it's the bars themselves or this steel uh, sidebar here, and it's completely sturdy, you know, like nothing flexes, nothing rattles. It's just a really solid unit overall. Everything is immaculate on it as well. You know, there are no metal burrs or scratches or dings or anything. Everything is just very smooth, very sleek, and just a beautiful finish on it. These lights are all built in the US and I watched some of the videos that Chilled put out on how they're made and I understand now why there's such a meticulous finish on them. Each of these light bars has a total of 280 Samsung diodes, which are split 50-50 between 3000K and 5000K color temperature. They don't specify which model the diodes are exactly. I presume they're like an LM301B or 301H or something like most companies are doing. But I think Chilled is sort of playing this close to their chest because they don't want to be copied. There are also five of these columns, uh, each with three 660 nanometer deep reds for a total of 15 of those as well. Chilled reports a system efficacy for this light of 2.76 micromoles per joule and a total PPF output of 897 micromoles per second. Within the Growcraft series, Chilled recommends two different lights for a 2x4 space. The X3 here would be their enthusiast level or performance light. They also make an X2 though with just two bars. Both of the lights share the same HLG 320 watt driver from Meanwell. So that would mean that the X3 here has another 280 diodes plus the reds to distribute all that power, you know, compared to the two bar version. So that's gonna mean that each one of these diodes is going to run a little bit cooler, a little bit more efficient, and you're gonna have a higher output. As I mentioned earlier, to power the X3, you get one of Meanwell's flagship LED drivers from their HLG line. This is the HLG 320H48B. What I like about this driver and the light and the way they're designed to work together is that this thing is meant to be run outside of the tent. So if there's no spot that it actually sits on the light, Instead, they give you a nice chunk of cable with your kit. This can get run up and out of the tent, connect to your driver, and then you don't have to worry about the driver sitting inside the tent and generating extra heat. So it's a lot easier to control your temperatures. In terms of connectors for the DIY kit, you get these Wago lever lock style connectors, standard. These are for your AC input wires, your DC output, and your potentiometer dimmer leads. You can also purchase an additional push lock connector kit, which is what I have and what I installed. With the push lock, you get waterproofing on it, you get strain relief, and you get the convenience to connect and disconnect your driver, both on the DC output side and the AC input side, super easily. So these things are a godsend, and I would recommend going with the push locks if you can. Putting this light together was pretty simple. Chilled has some very comprehensive documentation on assembling this X3. Since their material is so good and so thorough, I'm not gonna go into super fine detail on my own build, but I will give you a quick recap of the whole unboxing and build process. Packaging was very good for the X3. Everything was snug and there was no movement inside the box. You'll get a bunch of empty boxes that just serve to fill space in here to keep stuff from shifting. Here are the power cables, all the hardware and connectors, ratcheting rope hangers, and instructions. These white things are called the U-channels and they serve as the frame and house the PCB on one side. Here's my driver. And three light bars.
To take a closer look at all the miscellaneous parts, we've got the rope hangers, the push lock connectors, this is the strain relief connector that inserts the DC power wire into the U-frame. Then you get a couple Torx heads and Torx screws, your Owego connectors that you can use to splice your wires together if you so choose, as well as these custom white covers for hiding your wire connections on the light bars, a little white plug to hide the hole on the U-channel that doesn't get a wire pass through, and the potentiometer for dimming. For cable, you get this thick wire to connect the driver output to the PCB, as well as an AC cable with bare ends to connect to the driver AC input, and a little ring of what looks like 18 gauge red and black wire to handle the connections from the PCB to each light bar. Alright, let's put this thing together. These U-channels sit on either end of the light bars, and these are what hold everything together. They have to be oriented correctly so the holes line up to allow cable to pass through to each bar. One side will get the printed circuit board or PCB and you screw through the PCB and into the light bars on the other side of the channel. The other U-channel just stays empty. Each of the light bars gets a positive and negative wire run back to the PCB. There's a connector for each bar on the PCB and it can be a bit tricky to get the wire pushed in all the way. Chilled recommends using pliers to push them in, but I was a bit scared I might strip the jacket by accident with pliers, so I just worked at it with my fingers until everything was firmly seated in place, and then pull tested it to make sure that it would stay there. Next was the DC power cable. It gets fed through this strain connector and plugs into the big connector on the PCB. The ends of this cable come pre-tinned with solder and I was having trouble getting them to stay in the connector so I cut the soldered ends off and just inserted the bare copper instead, which held better. I couldn't get these ones in with my fingers so I needed to use pliers this time. I initially got the colors backwards by using the black conductor as my positive and I ended up switching it when I went to verify my polarity as I installed the push lock connectors. Really as long as you match up your color on both ends of the cable you're good, but the chilled instructions call for white as positive and it makes more sense having it this way when you go to connect to the driver DC wires. Once the strain relief connector gets tightened up on both sides it becomes a very strong connection and the DC wire won't budge. Now the end caps can be thrown on the U-channels. These little white covers are a nice touch and make the end result look a lot cleaner. Time to terminate the driver. We've got the AC cable, which has a brown, blue, and green conductor, the dimming cable, which has a blue and white conductor, and the DC output cable, which has a red and black conductor. As mentioned, I'm using push lock connectors, so I'll need the three pole connector for the AC side and the two pole connector for the DC side. Again, I chopped off the soldered ends because I prefer just to use bare copper and screw terminals over solder. An even better way to do it would be to crimp a ferrule on the end of the cable or something, but no pun intended, screw it.
I made sure that when the two ends of the push lock connected, the driver positive was connected to the PCB positive and the driver negative connected to the PCB negative. The AC side got the same treatment for the driver cable and the power cable. That's it for my build. Even though you build the thing yourself, you'd never guess that it was a DIY kit by looking at it. Now for some numbers. With the pot turned up all the way to maximum power, the X3 pulled 330 watts from the wall. After a 30 minute warm up, the driver case measured about 40 degrees Celsius and the back of the extrusions measured 37.3 degrees, although I would imagine inside the extrusion or on the back of the piece of metal that the actual light strip attaches to would probably be a bit hotter. PPFD values were tested using an Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor mounted to my automated measuring system in a 2x4 reflective space with the light turned up to full power. All measurements are in micromoles per meter squared per second, which I'll just call PPFD from here on. If you want to know how the light performs when dimmed, you can pretty much just multiply the full power results by the amount that you'd want to dim. So for example, if you dim the light to 50% so it was pulling 165 watts rather than 330, if the full power average PPFD was 1000, the average at 50% power would be a bit over 500, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 550. Chilled's recommended hanging height range is 12 inches to 24 inches for this unit. I tested it at heights of 6 inches right up to 36 inches with 253 measurement points per height. At over 40 watts of power per square foot in a 2x4, I knew this light was going to absolutely blast the space, but I couldn't believe the average measurements I was getting out of this thing and the crazy uniformity across the whole measurement area. If I take the average PPFD of all 4,048 measurements I recorded over all 16 heights, the global average PPFD is an insane 973, which is the highest I've recorded so far. This thing is almost averaging a thousand micromoles per meter squared per second over the entire data set. Here's the chart for the six inch hang height. Uniformity, which is the minimum recorded value divided by the maximum recorded value, is 29% at this height. And you really only see a big drop off on the outer four inches on either side. The hot spot in the middle isn't terribly bad here with readings in the mid 1500s. They're impressive numbers, but clearly this is not the ideal hang height. Once we get up to heights of around 16 to 18 inches, this light really starts to even out across the space and the whole chart takes on a beautiful red gradient. At 18 inches, all of the corner measurements exceed 800 and the center reading comes in at 1139. The average PPFD across the whole space at 18 inches is 999 with the lowest reading being 812 in one of the corners. Even with an average just one micromole short of a thousand, uniformity at this height is still an incredible 71%. 18 inches looks like the height I'd run this thing if I was trying to maximize PPFD while maintaining good uniformity. We're certainly past the point of diminishing returns with PPFD in excess of 1100 throughout the center of the space, so you'd have to work your way up to this amount of light gradually, or risk stressing the crap out of your plants. They may not like it even if you ease them into it as well, so you've got to observe and adjust as you go. Running CO2 in your grow space would be a good way to make the most of this intense PPFD and might allow you to drop the light a little further even. As we increase the hang height, the uniformity continues to increase and the average PPFD slowly decreases. Uniformity breaks 80% at a height of 26 inches and the chart looks beautiful. At the maximum hang height I recorded of 36 inches, uniformity is nearly 90% and the average of the whole space is still 804. 
I'll run through all 16 heights now quickly, and if you wanna take a closer look at these as well as the associated metrics, head over to my website, ppfdcharts.com, where I'm building a database of every light I test. My summary for this light? It's the best 2x4 light I've ever tested, hands down. Craftsmanship is top notch, aesthetics are top notch, and performance is, you guessed it, top notch. It's not cheap, but you get what you pay for. If you're serious about your grow and you want to push your 2x4 all the way to the absolute limit, the X3 is worth every penny. And you can save 5% of your pennies if you use the discount code LEDG5 on any chilled gear, and of course I'll add the link in the description. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you on the next one.